Hi guys, so welcome to this, another video in my TDAR series. This video is looking at TDAR on a Linux desktop. It shows how to set up TDAR as a standalone server and node, but also how to set up a node and connect it to a TDAR server elsewhere. So if that sounds interesting, let's get started. Okay, so now I'm going to set up TDAR on a Linux desktop. And the distro I'm using is Pop! OS, which is based off Ubuntu. So you should be able to follow along with this video with any Ubuntu-based distro at all. I found for me when setting up on Linux, I ran into a problem with the FFmpeg, which I didn't get on Windows or Mac. Now you may or may not find you have the same problem I did, but if you do, as you'll see later on, it's really easy to fix. Anyway, let's get started and download what we need from the TDAR website. And here's the TDAR updater for Linux here. So I'm going to download this onto my desktop. OK, so now I'm going to extract this file here. And now just pop this into a folder. OK, so now let's go into the folder and run the file. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click onto this, go to Properties, and then Permissions, just to make sure that Allow Executing File as Program is checked. Now you can just run this file, but it isn't actually the best way to do it. And I'll show you why. If I click on to run here, we can't see exactly what the TDAR update is doing. And because of that, we don't really know when it's finished. The TDAR updater basically downloads what's needed. And at the moment we can see some files and folders are here. So they're not all here yet. And when they are all here, there's nothing to tell us that it's completed. So we just have to wait a few minutes to be sure everything's done. So I'm going to fast forward a few minutes to be sure everything's downloaded. And when it's finished, you should see four folders and two files. In my opinion, running the installer this way isn't the best way. It's quite confusing because you can't really see when it's finished. You don't really know. So the best thing to do is actually run the file from a terminal window so you can see what's happening and you know when it's finished. So I'm just going to delete all of these files that were just created, start again and run it in terminal. So now I'm going to open a terminal window and actually let's just resize these to make it easier. And then drag and drop the t.updater into the terminal window and then just hit enter. So it's a bit easier this way because at least you get to see what's happening. And just like on Windows and Mac OS, it will download everything that we need and place them into the folder in which the tdar update is in. Now, because the tdar updater, when it downloads the files and folders, it puts them in the same location where the updater is. So that's why earlier, after I downloaded the updater and extracted it, I made sure the updater was in its own folder so that it didn't download everything just randomly onto the desktop. Anyway, we'll know that the tdar update is finished because it says finished right here. So now let's run the TDAR server. So I'm going to go into this folder here. So again, to run this file, I'm going to run it in terminal. Now this isn't running anymore, the updater, so I can close this. And then open a fresh terminal window to run the server in. So I'm just going to drag this across, drop it into the terminal window, and then hit enter. So you'll see this text scroll through as everything's getting prepared to run the TDAR server. And we know everything's finished because it says plugin update finished here. And here we can see the location where the TDAR server is running. So if I open up Firefox and pop that into the address bar, here we are in the TDAR web UI. So as expected, the TDAR server is running and there are no nodes present. So the next thing to do is to run a node, minimize this, go back into the main TDAR folder, and from here go into the TDAR node folder. Again, just like the TDAR server, we need to run the TDAR node in its own terminal window. Now I want to keep the TDAR server running, so I'm going to make sure that I don't close the terminal window it's running in. So make sure not to close this window, but merely minimize it. So I'm going to open up a new terminal window, and then drag and drop the TDAR node file into the terminal window and hit enter to run it. Now we'll know the node's ready because at the bottom, after it's been registered into the TDAR server, it will say here node registered. So now if we go back to Firefox, we should see the node there. OK, so there we are. We can see the node now. This one's called Bad Bed Bug. You've got to love the names that TDAR makes its nodes. OK, so just like the Windows video and the Mac OS video for TDAR I've made, I'm not going to show great detail of setting up the libraries and transcoding. If you want to see about that, you can see my original Unraid one and follow along from there. Now, when running a TDAR node and TDAR server on Linux standalone, just the same as in Mac OS when we do the same, 
As of making this video, when we choose where the location for our library is, and we use the file browser, then we have a bit of a problem. It doesn't quite work properly because the location it puts in here isn't actually the full path to the file. And if we were to leave it like this, when it does a transcode, we get an error that would look like this. Now, I'm not really going to show the whole error. If you want to see that, then watch my TDAR video on macOS. You'll see the whole error happening in real time there. Because using the file browser on macOS causes the same problem. Doesn't happen on Windows, just macOS and Linux. Now, if you're watching this video in the future sometime, I'm sure the devs have probably fixed this error by now. So you may not have this problem at all. But for those of you watching this before that time, we need to find the location manually and pop it in. And the easiest way to do that is to actually open a terminal window and then drag and drop the file you want to know where the location is into that terminal window, which will show you its location. Okay, so I'll just minimize Firefox so I can see what I'm doing. And on the left hand side of the desktop, I've got this folder here called test files, which I got a couple of video files into transcode. And when I drop that folder into terminal, I can see its location here. So I'm going to copy that onto the clipboard, go back to Firefox. So I'm going to delete this out here and paste in the location I got from terminal. OK, so now I'm going to do the same for transcode cache. Let's minimize Firefox and drag the folder into which we're going to use for the transcode cache, pop it into the terminal window, copy that location, go back to Firefox and paste that in. OK, so before I do a test, I just need to fill in the transcode options and scan the library. I'm going to go to the TDAR main tab here and set the transcode options for this node. And now TDAR, it should be transcoding. But if I scroll down, I've had an error. So if you click on the info here to see what's gone wrong, it's telling us there's an error loading the shared library, this libstl file here. It's saying there's no such file or directory. So I'm going to minimize Firefox and I'm going to open the TDAR folder here. And if we go in the TDAR node folder and then into assets and then into app here, we can see here FFmpegs in this folder. So I'm going to go inside there. So if I open up that folder here and open the terminal window, and if I run this FFmpeg file, then we're getting the exact same error. So basically this dependency is missing. Now if I type FFmpeg here and hit enter, I don't actually have this installed in my pop OS. And so because FFmpeg has never been installed, I don't have the dependencies. And so that's why I got that error in TDAR. So when we install TDAR with the TDAR updater, it does supply a binary for FFmpeg, but not its dependencies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type sudo apt install FFmpeg and hit enter. I'm going to pop in my password and type Y to install and wait for that to download. OK, so that's now installed. So now if I type clear and try running this FFmpeg again, I'm going to get the same error. Now that's because this version of FFmpeg isn't the same as I've just installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this file here. Then I'm going to find where FFmpeg is installed in pop OS. So to do that, I'm going to type locate FFmpeg. And again, I can't use this command because I need to install mlocate. So I'm going to type sudo at install mlocate. OK, so now that's installed, I'm going to clear the screen again. And again, type locate FFmpeg. OK, so we can see a lot of things here. And if I scroll up here, it's probably going to be in USR bin. Yep, there it is there. So now I'm going to go to that location. So here I'm going to click other locations, computer, USR, bin. And I'm going to highlight a file and just start typing F, F. And there we have FFmpeg. So I'm going to copy this and then go back into the TDAR folder, into the node folder here back into assets at FFmpeg, into the FFmpeg 42 folder, and I'm going to paste my version of FFmpeg in here. So just the first simple test, can I run it from here? Yep, everything's fine. I can see that it's working. So now if I go back to Firefox, close this window now, and I'm going to requeue this file to be encoded again. And hopefully this time, we're not going to get an error. 
And scrolling up, there we are, Ancient Aliens is encoding. Everything's working fine. Okay, so TDAR's working standalone in my Pop! OS Linux. So now I'm going to close this window and exit both the terminal windows to stop both the node and the server. And now I want to use this node to connect to the TDAR server on my Unraid server. So I'm going to open up Firefox here and here I am into my Unraid server. Now I'm just going to note here the IP address of my Unraid server is 10.10.20.199. We're going to need that later so I may as well copy that onto the clipboard and I'm going to go onto the Docker tab here and here's my TDAR containers. On the TDAR server I'm going to look at the template by going to edit here and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom where the two important locations for me is the TDAR media library here and the TDAR transcode cache here. Okay, so now I'm going to make Firefox half the size of the screen. And I need to connect to these locations over the network and mount them into my file system. Now there's two ways we can do this and in this video I'm going to show you the easy way using the file explorer and browsing the network. Now the downside of this method is each time you reboot your computer, you need to go on a file browser and remount the locations, else it won't work. Now there is another way where you can actually mount the network location to a folder you create and have that auto mount after every reboot. I'm going to put that into a separate video because that's useful to know for many other things other than TDAR. So anyway, the quick and easy way is we go onto our file explorer here then we click on here where it says other locations. Here's the name of my server called Prime and here is my transcode temp share here for the transcode cache. So I'm going to click onto that one here. I don't need the username and password to connect so I can connect anonymously. So I'm going to click on to connect. And now we can see that's mounted here into the file browser. Now again I'm going to click onto other locations and now under server address I'm going to type smb colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address of the server, which is 10.10.20.199. And then the name of the share I want to connect to. Now in my TDAR template on the Unraid server, the media library is mounted to forward slash MNT forward slash user. In Unraid, by default, this location isn't available as a share. And so you have to manually create that on the Unraid server. And if you want to know how to do that, then please see my video here. So on my server I've already got that share created and it's called root share. So that's the name of the share I want to put in here. Now the reason I'm manually typing in the location of the share and not using a file browser is because this custom share doesn't show up in the file browser as an available share. So with that location put in I'm going to click connect here. Now obviously on my Unraid server I've got this set with security because it's the root of all the shares. So I'm going to click on here registered user put in my username as Ed and my password underneath. And with that done, I click this connect button here again and that will connect directly to that share. And there we are, we can see all of the other shares inside the root share in this folder here. So we've got both of the locations we need that are in the template of the Unraid server. And so now we need to map these locations with the file path translator in the configuration file of the TDAR node. Okay, so now I'm going to move this file browser up a little bit here. Just to make a little bit of room, I need to open another file browser to go to the TDAR folder here. And now I'm going to go into this folder here, configs, and I'm going to edit the TDAR node config.json file. Now the first line here at the top, this is the name of the node, and this is what will show when we open the Unraid TDAR server in the web browser. I'm going to leave the name as it is, and then underneath here, we need the node IP, so this is the IP address that Pop! OS is running on. And to find out that I'm going to open the terminal window here and I'm just going to type ifconfig. And here I can see the IP address on which Pop! OS is running. Now you want to make sure that your IP address is a static IP. I have mine statically assigned from my router, so I know that it's always the same. So I'm going to put the IP address of the node in between these quotations here. The node port, I can leave it as it is. And now for the server IP, well that's the IP address of the Unraid server. And for me that's 10.10.20.199. So I'm going to pop that in here. Again between the quotations. Okay, underneath here we've got handbrake path, FFmpeg path, 
and MKV prop edit path here. So we can if we want to put the path locations of these programs into the configuration on the node. For example, the FFmpeg path, if you remember I found out what that was earlier, I could put forward slash USR forward slash bin forward slash FFmpeg. Now obviously that overrides the local files that are downloaded with TDAR. I'm just going to leave it as it is because I know I've got the correct binary in that path there. And so next here, path translators, this is the mappings that map to these locations here, which we just mounted into the file browser. Now, because there's media library and transcode cache, I'm going to need two of these. So I'm going to copy the curly brackets and what's in between here and put it underneath this curly bracket here. But I need to put a comma first and then enter onto a new line and then paste in the second path translator. Okay, so the first path translator, here where it says server path, well, we can get the server path from here, is forward slash MNT forward slash media. And this is the location that TDAR uses itself. If we look here, this is the location that that mapping is related to. So I'm going to put that in here, again in between the two quotations. And underneath here is the node location, or the location in POP OS. So obviously that's this location here, the root share. Now to find out what that is, I'm going to open a terminal window and click on the root share location here. Then it's going to drag one of these folders into the terminal window, which gives us the whole location. Now obviously I don't want to be in the LAN cache share. So basically I'm going to delete this part out because this is the location I want and I'm going to copy that I don't want those quotes in it. I just want the actual location. So be careful not to pick up the quotes. And then in the configuration file, I'm going to paste that again between these two quotations here. And so now that location's mapped across onto here. So next, um, transcode temp. The location of transcode temp here is forward slash temp. So that's the server location here. And the node location, we're going to need terminal again. Now we can't actually drag this location across into there. So I'm going to have to create a folder inside of here. Just so I can drag that in here to get the location. So my folder is called QWERTY here. So I don't want that. So I'm going to delete the forward slash QWERTY off from this location. So now we can see that this is the location here. Now if you notice this part here where it says percent %20 the reason it's got that there because the location is the share name transcode temp with a space in the middle. This percentage 20 represents the space. So again, we want to copy this location, making sure not to copy the quotes and paste that in between the quotes here for the node or the pop OS location. OK, so that's all done. I can save this. And we can close this file browser here, the terminal window. And now I'm going to go back to the TDAR folder here into the TDAR node. I'm going to open a new terminal window. Now, obviously, I don't need the TDAR server running on Pop! OS because it's running on Unraid. And I'm going to drag the TDAR node into the terminal window and hit enter. OK, so now the node's running. I can minimize it. Close this window. And I'm going to go across the TDAR here and make this full screen. And now if I go to the main TDAR page here, scroll down, I can see here that bad bed bug which is Pop! OS, it's transcoding and everything's working fine. OK, so there we have it. A TDAR node running on Linux desktop connected to a TDAR server running on Unraid. Now, I really hope you found this video useful. And if you did, I really appreciate it. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share the video with anyone else who you might think will find the video useful. Now, I just want to say a really big thank you to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you so much guys for all of your support and making it possible for me to make these videos. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.